interested in backache, and I looked on the web for cures, and I actually came across this. It's a genuine herbal remedy for backache, okay, potters. So I thought, well, I wonder if it works. And being a, an evidence-based person that I am, I couldn't find any trials on Medline for, for potters, so I decided to conduct my own trial. I didn't get funding from the pharmaceutical industry or potters, <laughs> so it's quite a small trial, but it's superb. There was no bias whatsoever. I had the randomization done centrally by a friend. It's absolutely superb trial. It fits all the criteria for being bias three. And five people ended up being randomized to get plus of potters, and five people got an absolutely identical and indistinguishable placebo. And four out of five people got better with potters, and two out of five got better with placebo. First of all, I want you to do, before we even go on, I want you to tell me what the relative risk of getting better with potters was, and what the risk difference is. Paul, what did you make the relative risk of getting better to be? Oh, we're not switched on. Did, did everyone get that? Twice as likely to get better with potters than with... Yeah? yeah? And you didn't dare say that on camera, you were so insecure. <laughs> what was the risk difference? Um, two, two? Ex two extra people out of five got better with potters. That's two, two out of five, which is 40%. Okay, so two out of five, 40% got better out of potters. So if we... If 40% extra gets better, how many, if we treated 100 people, how many extra people would get better? 40. So for every 100 people we treat, 40 extra will get better. So what's the number needed to treat? Two point something, yeah. Two point, oh, something good at maths over there. Okay, so this is, you can put it in a two by two table like that if you want. And um, here we have four, this, this is how on these blobograms you get this. So here's the study, this is my little study I did. The next line will give you the intervention. The next line gives you the control. And you get a little fraction like that. Now that little fraction, it's telling you the first bit, the numerator is how many people got better. And the denominator, the bit underneath, is how many people were in that arm. So here's our study. Four out of five got better in potters and two out of five got better in placebo. And there we are. It's, Paul gave us the relative risk so that we know the number at the bottom is one and there's our blob above two. That's our point estimate. Unfortunately, I don't think my little laser works, but there you are. Your, there's your blob on your blobogram. So that's how a blobogram works. It's giving that um, the point best guess of how good it is. It's twice twice as likely to get better with potters. Yeah? So um, I immediately went out and invested in the potters industry, and I now want to sell you all potters. Are you going to buy this? Do you believe that potters cures backache? This is an unbiased study. We need to look at the characteristics <laughs> of the, the... The baseline characteristics. Did my randomization work? Yeah. <laughs> no, I was just going to ask did all the all the all your um, participants did they have the same characteristics in relation to back pain? You know, were they muscle or were they They had low chronic back pain of no particular cause and, and we did seem to get a um, good randomization only, yes? The well, numbers aren't significant. There must be a, I mean you, uh, you, mean, you have a very small population to really come at a conclusion that the number that that's a significant difference. Might be very expensive. So you're telling me you don't believe it, not because the stu study's biased, but because it could have happened by chance. Is that what you're telling me? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Every time you see a result and somebody comes and the pharmaceutical rep comes and says, get look at this, look at this marvelous thing. You stop and you ask yourself, could this be due to bias? That's the first thing I always ask myself. Hey, let me have a look at how that study was done. So that's the first thing. Is the study valid? Is there something in the way they conducted the study that would give them the results? So the first thing I ask myself is, is it valid? Is there bias in there? The next thing I, you want to know is, 
could this have just happened by chance? <coughs> and only if I can't find bias or chance do I start thinking, hmm, maybe there's something here. Okay, so we don't...